Saying you're gonna start a company is all well and good, but how do you actually do it? Like what steps do you have to take to legally form the company and turn it into its own entity? This is the video where we're gonna talk about it. Welcome to Brick by Brick, a step-by-step -step YouTube series that documents the building of a company from start to finish. Hey, there, yeah. So there's a five-step checklist that I like to use whenever I start a new business. And it goes like this. First, you get your LLC or your corporation set up. Next, you get an EIN, also known as an employer identification number. It's like a social security number for your business. Once you have those two things, you can go open up a business bank account, which is the third step. You go online to a bank like mercury.com, you provide your LLC information or your corporation information and your EIN, and they will assign you a bank account. It's pretty simple, right? The next thing, is to check with your local government to see if you need any special permits, business licenses, reseller permits, things like that. So for example, if you lived in Los Angeles, you wouldn't check with California or the IRS, you would check with Los Angeles City or Los Angeles County to see what permits you need. And that's all based on the address of your company. The fifth thing is to keep good records and stay organized. That is the most important. So let's talk about how to execute this stuff. For the first step, forming the entity, you can typically choose LLC or corporation. There's a handful of other choices to go with, but we're gonna stick with those big two. In the case of Vape Case, I chose to form a corporation. And the reason I chose a corporation is because I intend to sell this company uh, within the next five to 10 years, or at the very least license it or take on some investors. This is a total fun project for me. This is not something I'm gonna keep for a long time. So I chose corporation and I chose to have the corporation taxed like a C-Corp. C-Corp taxes are really unique. I'm not gonna lie. C-Corps are not good for the average business owner. Most business owners would do best by forming an LLC taxed as a sole proprietor gives you protection, allows you to file one tax return, makes it super simple. The reason I chose C Corp is because of section 1202, which allows you to sell your business after having it for five years without paying capital gains tax, zero. So it would be a good bet for me if I'm trying to sell the company. Another reason is because I wanna issue shares of stock. Um, and another reason is I want this entity to complete, be completely separate from me and I want it to pay its own taxes. That's another unique thing about corporations. They have their own tax return. So every dollar that this company makes, I'm gonna have to pay 21% on. That's the corporate tax rate, that's a C-Corp. And then whenever I pay myself, I'm gonna have to pay personal income taxes on it as well. So I'm gonna have double taxation. However, Vape Case doesn't need to pay me right away. In fact, I don't need to take any money out of Vape Case. So I'm just gonna leave all the money in Vape Case, pay my flat 21% and focus on continuing to earn the way that I normally earn. Okay, so that covers the uh, entities, but how do you make the entities? Like, where do you go? In my opinion, there's two ways. You can either form them directly with the state by going to the Secretary of State website for whichever state that you wanna form the entity in, or you can use a company like Inkfile. INC file is how I say it, but it doesn't matter. And I'll leave a link down below to that. INC file is a website where you can go to form LLCs, corporations, partnerships, whatever. And they, the user interface is badass. But my favorite thing about INC file is they give you the ability to pay for registered agent services, which I absolutely love because I don't wanna make my address public. Registered agent is just there to accept mail on your behalf from the government in case you're across the world and your mailing address doesn't work out. That's why you need a registered agent. My registered agents have never given me any mail, by the way. And the second thing I really like INC file for is a virtual address. This is so cool. So basically they say, hey, do you wanna use our address in Delaware? And I'm like, hell yes I do. 20 bucks a month, let's do it. And so they give me an address to use and whenever mail arrives at that address, they open it, scan it and email it to me. I can choose to have the mail forwarded to me or the packages sent to me, that's okay too. But the point is, is I get an address to use and that's the address that I use for my business. That prevents me from having to go get a warehouse or an office. It also prevents me from having to make my personal address public and that's a really big deal because I like privacy. So to form your entity, the short answer is go to INC file, pay them to get it done for you and everything will be nice, neat, and in a tight little package. It's the best way to do it. They're way cheaper and way better than LegalZoom, by the way. Okay, now we get to the EIN. 
The EIN, like I mentioned before, is the employer identification number. This is one of the easiest parts. You can just click on the link below and go to the IRS website where you can apply for your EIN. Now remember, the government, the IRS and the state, state is your entity, IRS is the EIN, they don't talk to each other. So you can go get your EIN as soon as you have chosen your name for your LLC. So uh, once your LLC or your corporation has been decided and filed, you can go get your EIN right away. That's going to be the new social security number for your business. And you're going to use that to apply for a business bank account. Okay. That leads me to the third point, business bank account. Once you get the uh, articles of incorporation or the articles of organization back from the state, right, forming your entity, and once you have your EIN paperwork, which you'll get instantly from the IRS, you can take those two things and you can go to a bank and open up a bank account. You can go to a local branch if you want to, or you can go online to a bank like Mercury. Mercury.com is my favorite. Um, I'm not endorsed by them. I just think they're a badass bank and they're really easy to use. Setting up a bank from your computer is dope. But if you're old school and you wanna go into a place, I prefer local credit unions. They're easier to work with and they're definitely more friendly. Worst case scenario, if you have to use a big bank, go with someone like Chase. Fuck Wells Fargo, those guys suck. Bank of America, those guys suck too. If you're gonna abuse the biggest one, just go ahead and go with JP Morgan Chase. At least they have a nice, robust online banking system and they talk to everybody. Okay, fourth thing, permits, right? And we touched on it a little bit earlier, so I'll just briefly touch on it again. Check with your local government. Local governments are who issue permits, cities and counties. If you're in an unincorporated area of the state, you're probably good and you can just check with the county. Otherwise, check with your city and make sure that you don't have to get a business license. Even people that are just running home-based laptop style businesses in some cities are required to get a business license. So don't mess that part up, definitely check. Fifth thing, staying organized. Here's how I stay organized. I have Notion, notion.so. It's an organizational tool that allows me to put all of my company information together and collaborate with other people, videos, pictures, whatever. It's so easy for me to stay organized. I also use Google Drive and Dropbox to hold all of my documents and my files. That way, whenever I have invoices or receipts, I upload them digitally and they never leave. I always have copies of them. I do not keep physical copies of receipts. You don't have to. As long as you have a digital itemized copy, you're good. So by doing all of those things, that's how you get yourself set up legally, right? You have to have a business bank account. Like that is so important. And then money will come into your business bank account. You spend it on business expenses, things like that. And then eventually when you want to pay yourself, you transfer money from the business to your personal account, and then you can spend it on personal money. You would label that transfer owner's pay or an owner's draw, by the way, if that's how you're going to do it. Now, there's one more thing that we're going to go over, and I just want to touch on it, is an operating agreement. An operating agreement is an agreement that you put together that states what happens to the people that own the company in the event of X. For example, what happens when you die? What happens when you sell? What happens when there's a disagreement? What happens when you add a partner? What happens when this happens? If you don't write your own operating agreement, you will automatically default to the blanket state operating agreement. And we don't want that. We want to define our future. We don't want the state to define it for us. So grab a napkin, a piece of paper, use the um, operating agreement for my business school or on my website. If you don't have one, let me know and I will send it to you for free. Or you can get it off my website or sign up for my mailing list. I think I send them to everybody there. Anyways, the point I'm trying to make is take the time to fill out an operating agreement and put it in a drawer. The only time you're ever going to look at your operating agreement again is if somebody dies, if you get sued, if you sell the business, or if something else catastrophic or monumental happens. I hope this video helped. If you need anything else, leave a comment below. Otherwise, you know where to find me. I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.